Welcome to the Hollywood Raw YouTube page, guys. We're happy to have you here. Make sure you like, subscribe, leave us comments, do all the stuff. What are you waiting for? Let's go. I got a drug addiction to feed. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Hollywood Raw Raw Rundown. This is where we do the top 10 stories of the week. My name is Adam Glenn. On the other side of the country is Dax Holt. How are you, sir? I'm doing good, except I'm a little nervous. Your, your allergies, I mean, I hear you're still sniffling. Yes. And then I read an article this morning that said, oh, allergy symptoms can also be the new strain of COVID. Dude. What's yeah, going on out there? I don't know. I'm hurting, man. I, <laughs> like a smoker. I'm hurting, man. Allergies are killing me right now. But or you know, it's not killing COVID me. It's hoodie. Is... Yeah, that could be. But you, you, you see in the hoodie? You looking at my I hoodie? See. Oh, I see it. A little little yeah. hoodie from Mr. Mark Wahlberg. He he gifted. Yeah, you I'm it. a brand ambassador. I'm a brand ambassador. <laughs> um, no, he's a good. So real quick, before we get into the raw rundown, which we do the top ten stories of the week. Mark Wahlberg was doing an event in New York City for his new tequila. So um, I go to – here's a story, Dax. So it's pretty cool. I go check it out, and mm -hmm. the bar was, like, busy. Like, definitely – it wasn't, like, packed. It was, like, a good, solid crowd, like, full, not too crowded. They're giving out for, like, an hour, like, free tequila, free margaritas. Obviously, Mark's promoting his tequila. And it was open to anyone. You just had to make a reservation mm -hmm. online. Um but it was cool, a good crowd. And Mark's there. And I saw him, but I saw some other people I knew. So, like, Mark was probably, like, 40 feet away from me behind the bar. And all of a sudden, I heard, yo, yo. And I'm just keep doing my thing. I'm not paying any attention to it. And some guy's like, yo, he wants you. I turn around. It's Mark Wahlberg. He's like, yo, yes. get over here. Get over here. He's like, hey, take a shot. How are you? He's like, I like the sweatshirt, bud. How I was wearing a municipal sweater. <laughs> He's like, how are you? Good to see you. And then he starts going to, like, the people I was with. He goes, this is a good guy. He's a good guy. Like he just started boasting about. It. I mean, it's kind of cool, but That's it was just dope. it was so sick, dude. Because like other people like saw it happen, and um, actually, it's funny because I would I didn't RSVP for the event, and I basically snuck into the event. I didn't, you know, and I just <laughs> what I did was they had a clipboard with names on on top. So I walked to the guy. I go, hey, how you doing? And real quick, I look at the the clipboard. I saw a name. I said, hey, my name's and I said the name. And the guy's like, oh, you're right here. All right, poop. And, and that's how I got into the event. <laughs> Is that so weird? So the real John Doe did not get into the event. Yes. But I, Adam Glenn did. Yeah, I just walked in and did it really smooth. And I looked at the clipboard, saw a name, said I was that guy. And the guy's like, oh, oh, yeah, put a wristband on him, go up. So I got into the event. <laughs> and the people, there were some people at the event who were like, are very cool. And they saw Mark know me. And they're like, mm. oh, holy shit. Like, Mark knows Adam. And uh, I mean, listen, we're not friends by any means, me and Mark, but we're, we're like, we're cool with each other. If I see him, like, it's like we talk a little bit and like, it's, it, <laughs> it was just cool for him to like call me over from like 40 feet away behind the bar and like people like, who is this guy? And, uh, you know, it was, uh, that was my uh, cool Mark Wahlberg I story. love it, dude. He really seems like a, a really cool, just fun guy. I mean, based on all the stories that you've told me every time you run into him out in the street, he sounds dope. He's just a good person. He's good to normal. You know what it is? He's very good to people on the street from like just not I, I'm a normal person, but like regular people who don't usually see celebrities and they get really excited to see Mark. He's so good to them to give them that really quick second where they could get a selfie that, you know, will make them a fan for life, but also yeah. like make their day as well. Like it's just like, oh, my God, that was so cool. I just met a huge a you say a list, right? Mark? Yeah, I'd give him a list status. Because you're a tough critic when it comes to A-list. I, I am a tough critic. Y you asked me about someone the other day, and I did not give them the A-list title. Uh, but I would say I would say Mark is A-list. I would say so, too. But it was just it's just he's just a very good person. All right. We could keep talking about Mark Wahlberg, but we're going to get to our top 10 stories of the week. But before we get into the top 10 stories of the week, we read a review. Dax, do you have a review ready for us so we can yep. give someone a good shout out? I uh, got an iTunes review. This one comes from CC Suncat. Uh, five stars, the best pop culture podcast. I found this podcast randomly and it's become one of my faves. Love Dax and Adam stories. And they have the best guests spilling tea. I'm going to read another one because I don't know if I've read that one. <laughs> so I'm going to read a second one. Uh, this one's uh, from Emmanuelette. 219 it says faves the only straight male podcasters i will ever actually enjoy listening to laugh out loud 
<laughs> that is true. It's so that funny, is quite, dude. Quite the honor. Thank you. We appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad we're really. Sure. I mean, it's inside joke. We're the only two oh. straight guys that talk about, you know, this stuff. All of this stuff. It's so true. Yeah. It's. But we. But we love it. That's. That's yeah. the funny thing is like, <laughs> I don't know why I love entertainment so much, but I do. Yes. And guys, please, uh, when you do the reviews, leave your name on there. Just go to iTunes and wherever you leave. Read a review on Apple, wherever. Just put your name there. So this is the best way to give you a shout out. On to the top 10 stories of the week, starting with number 10, Dex. Number 10, Morgan Whalen. Woo, his fans are pissed. Uh, so basically, he had a concert. And minutes, literally minutes before the can- uh, the concert started, and this all went down in, uh, where was this? Uh, Oxford, Mississippi, I think. Yeah. Um, so he he had filled the stadium. Sixty thousand people are there. Five minutes before the the concert is supposed to start, they put up a big sign and announced he will not be coming out. He's lost his voice. That didn't sit well with the fans because most of them are like, wait, wait, wait. You're telling me he lost his voice five minutes before the show? That is not possible. If he was sick, if he was under the weather, he knew hours, if not a day before, that this was a possibility. Don't waste our time having us drive to the stadium having us buy merchandise sit there i guess there was the opening act um uh, hardy Ernest, and nate smith um, had already performed the opening act and then um and, and then he never came on morgan never came on so people were just like this is bullshit i you know we should not have waited you should have given us a heads up long before this like uh and that was his like true fans calling him out for wasting their time yeah, um, you know it's so crazy. I so when I hosted a game show called South of Wilshire. Thanks for watching, everyone. Um, yeah, everyone's like, "What?" Um, <laughs> I like, what? And you're like, "That's the reason it's not here anymore." Assholes. So I, <laughs> I don't know if I told. Yeah, exactly. Piece of shit. Um, but when I, I lost my voice right before we we're about to tape 16 episodes. Oh wow! 16 I didn't episodes. know that. I would tape eight episodes. Yeah, yeah. Wait, did I ever tell you this? So Mm-mm. I would tape eight episodes on Saturday, tape eight episodes on Sunday. And the day before I lost my voice, and they they sent me to a doctor on Sunset Boulevard, said, Hey, just relax, go home, take the day off, go to this doctor. He's gonna give you a shot. And in that shot, you're gonna be fine. And I said, What? Okay. What? So I go to this doctor on Sunset Boulevard and uh I show up to the office and I'm like, hey, my name's Adam Glenn. They're like, we don't have you down. And then I said the person's name who sent me. They go, oh, 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 right this way. They don't even bring me to a room. They bring me to a closet. And the doctor comes in and says, like, celebrity doctor, celebrity surgeon on the sleeve, you know? And I'm like, oh, okay. The no, guy gives like me a it, sh- liter- it literally said celebrity doctor on the sleeve. Yeah. It said celebrity doctor, so celebrity lame. surgeon, That's one or the other. Douchey. And um, the doctor goes, listen, you're going to take this shot. Just relax today, but you're going to be fine. And I'm like, uh, okay. So. I go, I get the shot the next day, dude. I did full fake tits. I had tits. My, I had, I had, no, I, um, I, dude, I did eight episodes Saturday. Felt amazing. I felt like I could have done all 16 on Saturday. I went to the gym after, like, I, it was like a limitless drug. What was it? Any clue? It was like a steroid, some sort of steroid. And I mean, was it the healthiest thing to take? Probably not. Did I have a choice? No. Um, you know, it was kind of push, but I probably would have took it anyway. Um, so my, you know, bringing it back to Morgan, I'm like, you probably could have taken something to kind of fix it. I mean, you know, I there is imagine, drugs yeah. out there. There's people out there that, you know, football players break their ankle at the second quarter. Somehow they're playing in the third quarter, you know, cause they're mm-hmm. drugged up on something. So, but I also under his, you know, you don't have to take that stuff. So I understand why people are pissed. I mean, if you take the time, the work, the energy that, it takes to go to a concert and then there's no, no, no show. No. Here, let pissed. me, let me also be clear. People aren't pissed that he got sick. People are pissed that he, they waited until five minutes before he was supposed to walk out on stage to announce it. Like they, he could have saved everyone driving to the stadium, paying for parking. He, they obviously did the refunds, but people had already purchased merchandise. So they just felt like, Hey, help us out. If you're going to cancel a show, cancel it with enough time that we don't have to drive to a stadium and waste Correct. our time. I get it. I get it. And I, I understand both sides because I have to imagine he was really trying to get it in. Like, listen, I got to get better. I got to get better. But you just got to be 
better about those type of decisions. Like you need yeah. to really make a strong point. Like, hey, people are coming in. You need to decide that hours before if you can't do a show. So I, I, I kind of go with the people here. They have good reason to be upset here. Because can you imagine, like, it's one thing going to, Madison Square Garden is the best thing to go see a place to see a show because it's, like, effortless to get to and go to. It's, like, nothing. But I don't go to games because it takes so much work just to get there. I don't go to concerts sometimes just because it takes so much energy to get there. So I can imagine how pissed people are. So, yeah, I, I rule with the people here. How about you? Uh, absolutely. Give them more time. I'd yeah. be pissed. I'd be really mad. Number nine. Uh, Paul Abdul says she's been asked, quote unquote, many times about joining the Real House for, for, uh, Housewives franchise. So uh, she was sitting down to a talk. You know, Paul Abdul, uh, you forget how famous she's been for how, so long. Like she and Janet Jackson teamed up back in the 80s um, and she was choreographing a lot of Janet Jackson stuff. And then she obviously started releasing her music and it just blew up her career. And then in the 2000s, she did American Idol. Um, so she's just kind of one of those people that's been famous and she knows a lot of the housewives. And so she did reveal that she has been asked many times whether or not she would be open to starring as a white or a housewife wife in the the franchise and she's like look i you know i'm she i've been asked for that plus some other franchises she didn't clarify which other one she's been asked for but she says i i'm gonna just prefer to remain a fan and watch them rather than be included in them and i kind of feel like that's a good choice for her i do think it's a good choice for her i understand she's, she's actually so kooky. she she's kooky but like lisa rinna you know, I don't know her financials, but in some part of me has to think of it was a good financial decision for Lisa Renna to do the show. Yeah. Denise Richards, same person. I know she is. She's a star. I think she's so pretty, but it. I don't know her financials either. But for some reason, I have to imagine for Denise Richards to do the show, it was good. The, 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 the financials made it a good decision mm -hmm. for Paula Abdul, who's been around for so long and she's done so much. I feel like. She she doesn't really need the money. And also, I think it's a really good person to be like asked to be on the show. But I also respect her decision. Like, yeah, it's not for me. I also feel like Bravo. So because she's a little kooky and out there and you would see that a lot on live television with American Idol. I don't think Bravo would do her any justice on making her look good necessarily, if that makes sense. I feel like she would walk yeah. away from that looking worse than, than better. I agree. I think it's smart for Bravo to ask her. It's like, boom, mm -hmm. I think she'd be a great, like Bravo made great decisions in hiring Lisa Rinna and Denise Richards to give that little bit of star power where it's someone who's like in your rate or afford like an affordable star mm -hmm. that's name worthy and good facial recognition to really boost the show. Paul Abdul would definitely be great in that, but I also understand. I think it's Paula doesn't need that. She's she's more of an icon. Yeah. Would you ever do a like a real housewives type show? Would you no. let cameras in your in your house? No, it's not for me. I, it's just like for me, I would feel a little bit dirty. But like you're it feel like dirty. Yeah, but that's because I don't shower. Um, <laughs> but I feel like it would just like it would hurt my soul. Yeah, a little bit, you know, like I work so hard and I feel like I'd be selling myself out like it, it's I, it would never what, even what I've kind of people, reality show would you do? Would you do like a Amazing Race or would you do any of those other type of reality shows like the challenge? I wouldn't do the challenge. I maybe like 10 years ago, I would have done the challenge, but I don't think I would have done any reality show. I think the only show I would have done like Amazing Race, like it's not worth the stress. I don't. I though uh, for long term, I don't think I'd enjoy myself doing it. I'd be in my own head and it's just not a right fit for me. Um, I mean, of course, when you're younger, I'm like, man, I would love to go in the real world. You know, I'd say the one show I'd probably have all the shows if I had to choose, I would do, I would do Road Rules. Remember mm -hmm. Road Rules? Oh, that, that that was dope. I love that show. I loved Road Rules. I don't know why MTV got rid of that show. And the, some of the biggest stars from like the challenges and stuff were on that, like Mark and what's Mark's yeah. last name again? Mark, Mark uh, Long and Kit Mark Hoover. Long. There we go. Kit, Kit, who's now the star of Access Hollywood. It's crazy. I just loved Road Rules, but I, you know, it's something about reality TV. Again, maybe when I was younger, like, oh, this is cool. When I was like eighteen, but like very early on, like in my early twenties, I realized like this is not something I want to be a part of or do. Yeah. Actually, it's funny. I think 
when I was really young, this is like my early, early, like maybe when I was 18, 19, I was maybe in talks of MTV to do, mm -hmm. I want to be made into a comic or, okay. do, or maybe, and I, and I don't even know if that was accurate. I remember there's some conversation between me and MTV about something. Yeah. I, I would have done amazing race. I was really close to doing that one would have been fun. Cause that's just like up my alley. I like that yeah. kind of stuff. Um, real world. I think I would have done it. Jersey shore. I would have just wanted to be a fly on the wall. Um, <laughs> 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 I, uh, I, I think that those would be kind of the ones I would, I would lean to. Yeah. All right, let's move on. What are we? Talking all right. About sounds here? good. Um, all right. Number eight, number eight, Nick Lachey and Vanessa Lachey are to remain the hosts of love is blind. Uh, you know, there was obviously this massive surge of fans going and uh, they made this petition calling for their removal. But according to Entertainment Tonight, Nick and Vanessa will continue being the host. Netflix is not listening to all the craziness. And on that same note, sometimes this fuels more people to watch the show. Hate and love fuel ratings. So people will still tune in because they hate Nick and Vanessa and so they can go and they can trash them on social media and then other people tune in because they love them. Uh, but it seems like, uh, you know, there was all this talk about um, season one, uh, Lauren Speed and Cameron Hamilton, them coming in to replace the Lachey's, but apparently that is not true either. So um, Netflix did not respond to page six's request for comment, uh, but it seems that that will be the case. So if you hate them, buckle up. You got another season with them. Yeah, I mean, the petition is I can see this story being a story that Netflix pushed out because, you know, it keeps the show relevant, keeps the host names relevant. And I mean, do you really think an online petition was going to really be effective? Yeah. Everyone's like, oh, man, the the, uh, the Twitter people are, and I don't even know how many people signed, but it really wasn't that much. It just wasn't going to affect the host of the show. It did actually, you know, the next day after that reunion, more people talked about Vanessa and Nick Lachey than the actual cast members of the show. So that's, that's not thing. a, yeah, that's not a bad thing. At the end of the day, they don't give a shit. They'll, I remember meeting with like, I don't want to say the person, a very big person in, in the TV industry. Mm -hmm. And the person said, you think we care about the show? Absolutely not. We care about money. We care about ratings. So for them, it's just about like, They'll put a show about killing puppies. As long as if people tune in, they don't care. It's about money. It's This is a business. It's show business. So, yeah, the petition was going to make a difference. Yep. Agreed. All right. Number seven. Number seven. Sharon Osbourne says she pushed it way too far with plastic surgery. So she had a facelift uh, towards the end of like 2021 and basically said that she had one eye that ended up being lower than the other. And she said it really kind of freaked her out. She said, I put that one put me off. It frightens me now. She said, I really effing pushed it uh, with that last facelift. And now I'm like, absolutely no more. Time is against me. I cannot have another facelift. But she was apparently pissed. So she said she had the full facelift in October. And she said she looked like one of those fucking mummies that are wrapped up with bandages. She said, yeah. <laughs> she said it hurt like hell. You have no idea. And then it was a, a five and a half hour operation. Uh, and it was not worth the price tag. And she recalled telling the surgeon, you've got to be effing joking when she saw the results. Can you imagine Sharon Osborne? She unwraps her face and you're the doctor standing there and she looks at you. And she's like, I look like complete crap. That's awful. She said one eye was different than the other. She said she looked like a cyclops. Like all she needed was a hunchback to complete the look. You know what? I give Sharon Osbourne a lot of credit because she's not the only person to do this in Hollywood, mm -hmm. but she's always been one of the most outspoken, honest to talk cool. about it for years. It's not like a, you know, very honest, very real about it. And everyone, everyone does this. And some people hide, they don't talk about it, but she's been very um, outspoken and, yeah. about it and she doesn't hide about it and it's like she does her like it's uh, i give her i give her a lot of credit man she's always been i mean for how many surgeries she's got she's always disgusted mm -hmm. yeah no she's great with that she but it's gonna be her last one and apparently ozzy kind of agreed with her and he said i don't care how much it costs we'll get it redone like don't worry so have you i don't know if they fix the eye thing or what the outcome? It was just like, hey, I'm not going to do another facelift. I'm done with plastic surgery. Have you ever met Sharon? Yeah. 
What yeah, you thought? Where'd you meet her, and what were your thoughts awesome. on it? I met her at an Emmy party. So we had gone to the Emmys, and um, afterwards, CBS had like a little after party because they were the ones airing the Emmys that year. And so we went from it was at the Beverly Hills Hotel where they they taped the Emmys, and then we kind of went to this like pool area, and so all the hosts of all the CBS shows were there. And she was on the talk at the time. So I met her literally by the pool at the Beverly, I guess, Hilton Hotel is what it was. Beverly Hilton Hotel. And she was awesome. She was fun. She knew who I was. We had a great time. We took a photo. Um, she was great. Yeah, I met her once. And the one time I met her, I was a little bit starstruck because she was so iconic. And she's mm -hmm. like, you know, the Osbournes were such a huge show. And it came, you know, it's <clears throat> when the show came out, it was just such a big part of like my life growing up and I love the show. And when I saw her, I think a lot of people might be like, Oh, it's just Sharon Osbourne. But for me, it was more like, wow, that's Sharon Osbourne. Mm -hmm. And she was so nice and so sweet and so cool. And uh, I just hope that people give her like the credit that she deserves just of being like a cool person and just very interesting. I'm on that same wavelength. I loved the Osbournes, like love the show. So when we had Kelly on our show, that was like a, yeah. a huge moment for, for me, I was like, holy shit, like we got Kelly freaking Osborne to come on our podcast. That was nice. Yeah. Too bad the audio yeah. was so crappy. Yeah, that was her fault. <laughs> it wasn't our fault. That was her. 1988 <laughs> laptop that would, had a fan belt loose or something. I know. Whoa. All right. Number <laughs> six. Oh, let me find it. What is number six? Lisa. Uh, oh, Lisa. There we go. Lisa Hotstein. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of divorce drama going on with her and Lenny over the last year. Well, the judge has now kind of uh, decided to award her some money because she was basically saying, I need a ton of money. Um, and he is now or I, I don't know if the judge is a he. I apologize for that. The judge has awarded her eight thousand dollars per month. Uh, uh, and not only that, it's also, you know, status quo in regards to the kids, their insurance, their schooling, their medical all of that stuff is going to continue being covered eight thousand a month how do you think lisa because that's a shit ton of money to lisa Wait. she's probably that's like yeah. poverty line for her yeah no that's not a lot of money i mean <laughs> eight thousand a month two thousand a week oh uh, wait yeah no no yeah two four six eight yeah yeah God, two thousand a week so dumb that's really not you know what like i could live off that but it, she, that's gonna be a, yeah, a lot of people could live off that. Yeah. Can Lisa? Lisa yeah, can't her, live off that. Or Lisa's lifestyle. That's going to be really, really tough. That's going to be really tough. I mean, that's... That's like one outfit for her. Yeah. From yeah, wow. Some fancy spot. I don't, I don't even know. Um, and, and, you know, she lives a very fancy, fancy-ass life. Big houses. Um, and I guess he was also ordered to pay $60,000 worth of her legal fees because she apparently um, had already owed 85000 to the law firm representing her. So he's paying 60 of that. Um, and this comes after they kind of argued that, you know, that she kind of had her own money and she was making 30000 per episode for um, The Real Housewives Miami. And it was un insufficient to maintain her lifestyle. So I'm actually now that as I'm like saying this whole thing out loud, I'm surprised that the judge didn't give her more. I'm surprised the judge didn't give her more, but because you do this, have to maintain that that lifestyle for these kids, right? Like at the end of the day, if the kids they can't go from dad's mega mansion to mom's apartment, that's not that's not how it works. They kind of have to maintain a, a a similar lifestyle. You wonder what it. You know, when it comes down to money and Lenny, who's such a powerful, I would say powerful because he's a he's a doctor, but he just has such deep pockets. I mean, I'm just putting it out there. This is not true, but something I, I this is not I should say this is not I don't know any I, there's no evidence behind this. But you, you have to wonder if like Lenny just has so much money that Lisa doesn't even know about. Mm -hmm. well, he, you know, what, that's what very they common. Call him, they called him what the boob god. Yeah. He's like the he like he <laughs> runs Miami in, as yeah. far as like that goes. He's got a house in Starland. Like everyone knows who he is. He's the guy. So and there's a lot of fake breasts in Miami. So you wonder how many he's able to actually do. 
Oh, man. Well, uh, she's got to be happy that at least some things are, you know, starting to to go in motion because I think he had cut off her credit card. That was a big uh, story that we had chatted about a while ago. So at least something's making some motion here. All right. Number five. All right. Number five, Halsey splitting from her boyfriend after more than three years. Um, and they've got a son together. So this news broke this week. But Halsey's boyfriend, Aliv Aiden. Oh, I'm probably butchering that. Sounds name. good. Yeah, it sounds yeah, good cl- enough. Close enough. Um, they've called it quits. <laughs> <laughs> they've got a one-year-old son, Ender, together and decided to uh, separate split ways. Uh, it was, I'm, So E.T. did this story and they called her the you know, the bad at love singer. And I'm like, of course, that's what you call her at the very beginning of the story. Bad at love in a breakup story. Anyway, I just thought that was kind of funny. But uh, so per court document. By by the way, before you even go on, what a great title for a song. Right. Bad at love. That's such a good title. All right. So go go on. Uh, Here's a question for you. Here's a little trivia. Do you know Halsey's real name? Wait. So hold on. You, what was the question again? Do you know Halsey's real name? Yeah, of course. Everyone knows that. Ashley Nicolette Fra- Fragipine. Fragipine. You're whatever. such a bullshitter. You totally have the article up in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to stall so I could bring it up. <laughs> I did not know that was her name. Ashley Nicole Frang- Frangipane? Frang- Frangipane. Frangipane. Yeah. She's I, from I like, my area, too. Like, if you ask me, you're like, oh, you know Ashley Frangipane? I would have no idea that that is a like like I know Pink's real name, but I don't know. I didn't know. I thought Halsey was like her first name, and we didn't know her last name. She just became a one name kind of person, right? Yeah, I actually kind of like the name Halsey. Like, actually, if you named your kid Halsey, I would kind of actually understand it. Yeah. Right. I, <laughs> I, I like it. I kind of like the name. I like I like the name Ashley, but I like the name Halsey too, which is still Ashley, just spelled differently. Can I tell you one thing about Halsey? I've met a lot of celebrities. I've met a lot of singers. I've met a lot of pop artists. She's yeah. very, very attractive, very pretty. Mm-hmm. And I don't think she, like some people kind of, I mean, her her name doesn't get ruled enough in that like, wow, like stunning. Because I do find her stunning in person. Mm-hmm. Also very nice you, and sweet. So I've never met her. Halsey is one person I have actually never met. So I can, I can't say I've never seen her in person. So I can't. But I mean, she's beautiful from what I see in the media and stuff. Yeah, I I don't know. I she's one of those. And girls if she's like, dope, very it makes her prettier. Yeah. You know what? There's sometimes you meet a celebrity, and because maybe it's her personality too, where I I actually like her as a person. Yeah. She's very nice in person, which makes her even prettier. Like for example, Miranda Kerr is gorgeous. She's gorgeous, one of the most prettiest specimens I've ever seen in person. But then her personality makes her even prettier and hotter. Is she she's just nice or what? She's very nice. Very sweet. I know this is so random back to her being, you know, she's available now. So maybe, uh, you know, who knows? Well, she's got a little baggage with this kid. Um, oh. no. <laughs> no, but it's, it's I, I think Halsey's so talented. And I just, you know, she's one of those people you don't see enough of. Yeah. So and per court documents. So E.T. got their hands on the court documents and basically said that, uh, uh, that she, Ashley, is filed a petition to determine a parental relationship um, with, I guess he's a film producer, Olive. Um, they're filing, uh, they're filing using, wow, I can't talk right now. Um, what are they trying to establish? Child custody, visitation, and other child support. So they're, they're going through that because they were not married, that they've got to now figure it out through the courts. Yeah, well, anyway, that's it. Yeah. All right. Number four. Uh, number four, this one, I love the story, but uh, John Stamos revealed this week that he tried to get the Olsen twins fired from Full House. So he was on an episode of the Good Guys podcast with Josh Peck, and he was he was talking about how when they did the pilot episode for Full House, that the 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 twins wouldn't stop crying, Ashley and Mary-Kate. And they were super young at this point, but they literally every scene, they would just like cry, cry, cry. And they were told that because they were twins, the reason this would work for television is because you could take one of them away if one of them was in a bad mood or hungry or needed a diaper change. And the other one would be able to perform and then you kind of switch them back out. And so you you don't see that there's a change there. And he just said they cried and cried and cried. And I was like, nope, 
get them out of here. We're done. Bring in, a, you know, some other babies. Apparently, the other babies also cried and cried and cried. And so he was like, all right, I guess bring the Olsen twins back. That's interesting. Were they all? They, so I wonder the people they auditioned, were they all twins? Oh, I, that I don't know. And they were they were 11 months old at that time, by the way. Wow. They I mean, literally have been famous their entire lives. That's so crazy. It, it's a, yeah, it's. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Can you imagine, though, like the, the casting people were so smart, though, to book so to have twins do the show, you know, because yeah, like, I wouldn't even think about that. Like, oh, you just think, oh, I just got to get one kid and, you know, deal with it. But no, they were brilliant on that mark. And maybe that's a normal thing. And we just don't know. Like, yeah, if you I have guess... babies, if you work with babies, you got to have two. I mean, they did that in uh, Big Daddy when they had mm -hmm. the, those kids. And so, so it's like, I just never, twins. yeah, the Sprouse friends. I just never thought that was just, it's one of those things that I would never, I would never even consider and think, but like, no, we need identical twin kids to play the part because I think also it goes into the hours are allowed to work. Mm -hmm. So you could work one kid like eight hours and then work the other kid eight hours. If it goes into <laughs> overtime, I don't, I don't know. I think they're working 11 months old for eight hours. <laughs> well, yeah, it's somewhat because when they're not acting, they're put, they're making cell phones and they're built They're you know, they're knitting and stuff. Is that what we do with these child <laughs> actors? You know, they're, putting, they're, they're really just like, getting the hard labor out of them. <laughs> yeah. They're doing hard labor. I thought, I think I'd seen them in coal mines or something like that. I don't know with these kids. <laughs> number three, Dex, uh, number three, that's been a, Big story this week, but Glenn Powell and his model girlfriend, Gigi Paris, have split after three years together. And this is right on the heel. Like this news is right on the heels of a lot of talk about uh, Glenn and Sydney Sweeney potentially hooking up or having some massive chemistry while filming their new uh, project together. But um you know, it's it's funny because this story comes out. Him and Sydney have been all over social media together. They've been acting this movie together. And so people are like seeing the chemistry and they're like, wait, aren't you still with Gigi? Like what's what's happening here? And then, of course, this news breaks. And then there's a follow up story uh, that was put out in page six. It was like, no, no, no. Glenn and um, and his girlfriend, Gigi, they they broke up weeks before this Sydney Sweeney. And I'm like, OK, so Sydney's people put out this other story, like trying to make good because I didn't realize she's also with someone. Sydney's with uh, that guy that she's been engaged to, appar apparently. For yeah, she's engaged. Yeah, yeah. I, I had no idea. Now, is this is this a publicity thing, or you think we're going down a Brad Pitt, Angelina Jolie type situation here? I I don't know. I don't know. Here's my here's my thoughts on this. I don't know what's going on between Glenn Powell and Sydney Sweeney. In fact, I've never seen either of their work. I don't watch Euphoria. I don't watch. I didn't watch Top Gun too. I don't really know any of Glenn Powell's work, but I know the name. Mm -hmm. Sydney Sweeney is really working the the, uh, the PR stuff. I mean, I said it before. I think I might have said on Dumois. Like, she, I mean, she's you know, from what I know, she's been doing some set up PR shots. She's set up yeah. uh, photography shots. So it's um, her name is just in the news every week. They really, she's like the biggest star right now, and I I, I just. I'm always interested in the strategy to how they make an to a star and somehow they've been really keeping her name um, active in the news sites. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, and that's how you get a big name in Hollywood. You get on a big show and then you utilize your name and the show together and you do outside stuff to keep people talking about you. So this is the perfect when example. It you are connected to another big star in Hollywood and dating rumors always get a lot of attention and, this is going to work for her. Everyone's talking about her. Everyone's yeah, talking about actually, him. <clears throat> I'm actually, um, all right, here's my blind. You know, I'm not a big fan of blind items, but I, I can't really say the name. I'll tell you the name Dax off camera, but there was a very good celebrity, um, mm -hmm. doing setup shots this week in New York. And to the point where she was really like giving the camera guy that the paparazzo, like the shots, but then it was becoming a scene because other guys are getting the shots. And for some reason she got upset that she didn't even think she told the photographer, like, just get in the car with me. Just get in the car with me. And it was oh. like, you just outed yourself as, like, doing setup shots. And apparently, well, I talked to someone internally. I don't want to tell mm -hmm. the person I talked to, but the person said that the celebrity is upset because her photo doesn't run in any of the magazines. <laughs> Isn't so that crazy? Do, so why do setup shots if no one's even going to buy them? 
I guess you just keep saying, hey, we have all these shots. You might as well use it. Here's some quantity and quality shots. You probably need content. Here's some shots. And she was just getting upset that she just never runs. That's hilarious. Pretty insane. <laughs> Pretty insane, so there's right? A big, there's a star who's getting who's doing setup shots, but they're not getting placed anywhere, and they're not selling. Correct. That's awesome. Correct. And, and then yet there's stories about how much people hate paparazzi out there because they're taking your photo. And then there's right? people who want it so bad and they can't even get it. So Crazy. Good. Number two. Number two, James Corden revealing kind of like the real reason behind why he's bowing out of the Late Late Show. Um, so yesterday, Thursday, was the final episode of the Late Late Show with James Corden. I think it was his 1200th episode. Uh, you know, this has been they've been talking about this for a long time. Um, but basically, it comes down to his family. He's got his I think his parents over in the UK. They're getting older. He's realizing that time is running out. And he said, you know, making money is not as valuable as getting to spend time with loved ones before it goes away. And I'm like, that's easy to say for someone who's rich. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, <laughs> no, it's, it's true. Like you don't get that time back, you know, like once, once your parents are gone or once your family's gone, like not no amount of money in the world is going to bring them back. And I think that is what he is realizing. He's like, he's done it all. He's got, had this successful TV show for eight years. He's been on TV every single night. And, and honestly, he could go to the UK and do something similar because his show was bigger online than it was on the uh, on actual CBS. I'd never once watched a show on air. I've watched a ton of his clips online. So why not go be where you sh want to be and keep a YouTube channel going or something? You know, he could be just as successful from the UK. Yeah, I, I mean, listen, I, I'm not mad. I think James Corden did a good job with this show. Was it amazing? Like, it, it was a solid show. Yeah. He's not going to replace Colbert. You know, he's not going to move to the 1130 slot. He's never going to be in the running to be the main host unless he went to Fox. But right now, all the late night shows hosts are pretty much established. Again, I Kimmel, don't think he needs to. Yeah. No, he's he doesn't. bigger than a lot of these guys who have a better primetime position because he's got a better footprint inside of social media and YouTube. He just he crushed it uh, on online. And yeah. he could continue to do the same thing, start up a new YouTube channel because maybe CBS owns the right to the other one, but start up a new YouTube channel, keep doing random carpool karaoke things with your famous friends. It'll still get picked up. Yeah. And, um, you know, at some point he's made a lot of money. How much more money does he need to really, you know, for his great grandkids are never gonna have to work again if they really wanted to, you know, yeah. he, they're, they're, the money's there. So and I get it. That he spends so much time in acting now and doing big movies and voiceover and all this other stuff. Maybe he wants to just keep focusing on that. Like, let me just keep doing movies. Yeah, uh, and maybe... Then I only work two months out of the year and get a bigger paycheck than I do for my, my TV show. Yeah. Maybe he wants to spend more time proving to people that he's not a dick. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, there, a lot of people say he's an asshole. That's just the reports, but I met him once. He was very, he was fine. So he was nice. Yeah. Uh, I'm, you know, I was actually a fan when I got to meet him. So he was very nice to me, but there are some stories out there, but I respect why he's leaving the show. It's interesting that CBS is not actively trying to replace him. We don't really hear any rumblings about that. I think they're just giving up on late night TV. It's just not worth the cost. Who the hell is watching at 1230 at night anyway? Yeah, it's just, so it's, it's not worth the cost lot. for that. Uh, you know, who I met by the way, yesterday, speaking of like late night TV, I met uh, Byron Allen. Oh, was he? I've met him before. Was he was he pretty Have cool? You, to what'd you? you think? Yeah, he was fine. He was cool. How about you? Again, fine, cool. Like nothing that stands out super memorable by any means. Yeah. No, he wasn't he wasn't mean at all. Like it was like, oh my god, jump in the car. And I don't expect him to be like that, but he was fine. He was nice, you know, very successful. Yeah. All right, Dax, on to the number one story of the week. We got two of them. Uh, number one. Well, we've got two major deaths in uh television this week. Uh Len Goodman, who died at the age of 78, he was obviously one of the judges from Dancing with the Stars for many, many, many years. 
And then Jerry Springer also died at the age of 79. Uh, Jerry had passed away, I guess, from a brief illness. They did say it was cancer related, but they didn't really get into too much more than that. But Jerry Springer, obviously, TV legend, whether or not you watched a show. I mean, it was on for 27 years. You know the name, the crazy fights, the crazy just craziness in general of the Jerry Springer show um, was, was unprecedented. I mean, he really made a mark in television history. And then obviously Len Goodman, who was a really big deal in the dancing world for a long time. I guess he also had bone cancer and passed away. And he was also on Strictly Come Dancing. I mean, both of these two guys, very successful in their own right. And um, yeah, the Jerry one really made me sad. I met Jerry. He was a great guy. Like great really, guy. you know, he had such a big name in this industry, but a wonderful, wonderful person. Um, and I don't know. I had a lot of fun the day that I got to hang out with him. Yeah. Um, I never met Len, but, you know, I put Len as like he was dancing with the stars, you know, mm -hmm. like he he was just an iconic. He was just such a big part of the show where like, you know, he, like I he was the Simon Cowell of Dancing with the Stars that Simon was on American Idol or, he was, you know, just and, like and he was great. At it. He was. A yeah. Yeah, he was a great judge where he was just like charismatic and unique and just his accent that went along with it. I mean, he was the show. Never met him, but um, you wonder how many people that used to be on the show are like, oh, that sucks. Hey, about that position that just opened up. Dude, um, people do that. People are ruthless. They are so no, bad. I don't you know think what? he wasn't he wasn't on the show anymore, I don't think. I think no, but I, I kind of imagine that there is one of our former guests is definitely trying to fill that type of role um, <laughs> <laughs> um um but back to jerry jerry was one of the nicest most humble coolest guys and i'll say about jerry he always he knew the joke he mm -hmm. understood like yeah it's insane what i'm doing and he he enjoyed it but he he just liked people you know and uh he he knew that the jerry springer show was absurd and you know, it's also like a, in some ways, in my opinion, it's a little bit of a dying breed. I don't think talk shows are the same anymore. You know, there's you no one kind of bringing regular people on. Off, and you can't start off a new show like Jerry Springer. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. that show, I don't think would last today. It, you know, the reason it's just it's iconic at this point, but you can't bring out a, a Maury show or a Jerry Springer show at this point. Um, people would be like, what the hell are you doing? Yeah, but again, Jerry Springer was just so nice, always joked about the show. Like, he was never the one, like, trying to take it seriously. He knew his show was ridiculous. Um, mm -hmm. And he was the first one. He would beat you to the punch on about how ridiculous those guests are that come on. Um, Man, this is, our, like, this is the second guest. Like, we were supposed to have him on in a couple weeks. And yeah. um, this is the second time. Like, Chris, Kirstie Alley, she was supposed to come on oh, and then ended up passing before our opportunity to chat with them but I, I was really excited to have jerry on because again just a big name in the industry probably has the most amazing stories so i'm bummed we didn't get to pick his brain before his passing like that sucks oh man well that is our top 10 stories of the week thank you guys for listening if you're watching on youtube thank you for watching like and subscribe share with a friend Keep the reviews coming in, guys, because uh, we we love to give you a little shout out on the air. Um, you'll find out how to leave a review. Just do it. Just do it. It's that easy. <laughs> Follow us on TikTok, Instagram, TikTok. We're on it all. We have a private Facebook group called Off the Record, which I highly suggest you join. It's just a really cool community where you guys could ask us anything. You guys could talk to each other. It's just it's just fun. Follow me at, at Adam Glynn. Follow Dax Holt at Dax Holtz. We'll see you guys next week. Later. Guys, hope you liked that video. We got a lot more where that came from. Hit that bell, like, subscribe, share with a friend. The best you do support us is really doing that. And uh, we really need the money because we, we need hair gel. <laughs>